Welcome to Electron Online and in this video we're going to show you how to find the activation energy of a reaction. Remember that the activation energy is something that a lot of reactions need because not all collisions automatically end up in the molecules colliding, reacting with each other. Sometimes there needs to be enough kinetic energy before the collision is, is violently enough so that the bonds in the molecules can be moved or bent or vibrate enough for the reaction action to take place. So how do we find that activation energy? Well, what we can do is we can take some measurements. So for example, here we have a sample decomposition of acetaldehyde. This is CH3CHO, it's a gas, and it decomposes into methane and carbon monoxide gas. And let's say that we change the temperature and at various temperatures we measure the various reaction constants. And so from the previous video, when we talked about the Arrhenius equation, we saw that the equation had the form of a linear equation, y equals mx plus b, where the y was the natural log of the reactant constants. The, the, the slope was the negative of the activation energy divided by the gas constant. x was 1 over the temperature, and then b, the, what we call the, ver the um, where it crosses over the vertical axis, the intercept, uh, was the natural log of a, where a is what we call the collision frequency. So what we can see here from this equation, that the slope of this equation, the relation between the natural log of k and 1 over the temperature, uh, that the slope is equal to negative of the activation energy divided by the gas constant, that's this quantity right here. And so by using some numbers from a, from a, from a, um, from a reaction, we can actually figure out what that activation energy is. So let's determine the slope from this from this data here, but notice the data of course is taken, out, is taken in terms of the reactant constant and the temperature. We have to take the natural log of that, which are these numbers right here, and we have to take the inverse of the temperature, which are those numbers right here. So here we can see that the slope can be determined. The slope is equal to the rise divided by the run. And of course the rise would be the change in the vertical distance that would be the change in natural log of k. So let's take this value right here, and let's take this value right there, and take the difference of the two. That would be the change. Uh, so that would be the uh, initial value right here, minus the final value. You could do it either way. So it would be minus 4.51 minus the minus 0 0.24. That would be the natural log of k at this temperature minus the natural log of k at this temperature right there, and we divide that by the run, which is the horizontal distance, it's the difference in 1 over the temperature, but since it went this number minus this number, we have to go this number minus this number in the denominator. So it would be 0 0.00143 minus 0 0.00123. And so this is equal to, uh, that becomes a positive, add a positive 0.24 to that, that would be, um, Hmm, actually it's like a subtraction, that would be uh, minus 4.27, because 24 plus, tw uh, 24 plus 27 is 51, divided by, and the difference between these two, it looks like it's um, 0 0.00020. All right, so that's equal to the slope. And notice, by the definition, the slope is equal to the activation energy divided by the gas constant. So this must be equal to the activation energy divided by the gas constant, and that means that the activation energy, E, and of course, let's see here, the slope is the negative of that. Can't forget, can't forget that negative sign. So notice that this negative sign will then, of course, cancel out this negative sign. And the activation energy is equal to the gas constant times the ratio of 4.27 divided by 0 0.00020. And since, of course, the gas constant is in terms of joules, the activation energy will also be in terms of joules because this is 8.315 joules per mole times Kelvin times 4.27 divided by 0 0.00020. And that will give us, let's see here, um, this is the change in the 1 over the temperature. So that would be temperature, that would be Kelvin in the numerator. And if we do this per mole, we get moles in the denominator. So we get 8.315 times 4.27 divided by 0 0.0002 equals. And the activation energy is 
177,525 joules per mole or 177.5 kilojoules per mole. And that is a, actually a pretty interesting way to find the activation energy. Of course, you can just uh, do that via theoretical equation. You have to read in the, the rate constant as you're watching the reaction. You have to measure the temperatures when it happens. So you can see that the rate of the reaction changes with the temperature. You take the natural log of the reaction rate constant. You take the inverse of the temperature. You, from that, you find the slope of that equation, realizing the slope is equal to the negative of the activation energy divided by the gas constant. And then, of course, you equate the slope from the numbers. You set that equal to the activation energy times the gas constant. And there, you get the result. A pretty slick method, and it's very effective.